Hello, welcome to the certification application redesign demo. My name is Alicia Burke. I'm a product manager for the certification team and joining me is Jamie Williams. She's the product owner for Cert App Redesign. We are going to do a demo today, but first I want to give you a little bit of background on the changes that were made and how they're going to benefit our customers. So for the background, we did extensive user research including work from our customer research team as well as our UX design team. And our goal was to improve the application experience for all of our candidates. We have a much faster time to submit now. We were able to reduce the application from 30 screens down to four. So it's really exciting. And it's still uh, the same process to get certified in terms of you still need to have those years of work experience, your training hours, you still need to pass a robust examination, but we don't want the application to be a barrier. It should be easy to get your information into that application and submit it. One of the big changes we made is in terms of tracking their time. In the old application, they were tracking it by hours, breaking that out by domain. In the new application, we're tracking it in months instead. So they'll be filling out the month and year they started on a project or initiative and the month and year they finished. It's similar to how a person would track their work on a resume or on their LinkedIn profile. So it's a much more natural way of tracking the time. And also, we moved away from tracking hours by domain because in our research we found that that was not a natural way a person was tracking their time. So they were often kind of taking guesses and filling out the application. And we don't want to put people in a position where they have to do that. We want them to be able to be honest uh, and feel good about that, the information that they're entering. We also no longer are asking them to fill out contact information during the application process. They still will have to fill this out if they are randomly selected for an audit, but we're not making them do that up front. Um, oftentimes they may have left a position years ago, left the company years ago, and it's difficult to track down that contact information. So now we aren't asking them to do that unless they are going to be audited and that's needed. And finally, we are moving away from free text fields as much as we can and having a lot more drop down selection type fields. And that's to remove the subjectivity and make it a much more direct way of responding to the questions in the application. I want to go over a few key logistics. This redesign will impact all eight of the PMI certification applications. So that includes the PMP, the CAPM, the PGMP and PFMP, as well as ACP, PBA, RMP, and SP. The changes are all planned to go live in the second half of June 2020. All eight of them would go live at the same time. For anyone who has an opened but not submitted application at that time, there will be minimal disruption. We're going to be sending a courtesy email to those candidates to let them know about the coming changes and to encourage them to submit their application before those changes to avoid having to take any additional action. However, even if they don't take action, nothing negative will happen. We're going to be migrating all of their information from the old format into the new format of the application, and they'll just need to double check everything came over correctly and complete a few additional drop down fields that did not exist in the old version. And the support tools available include this video recording link, as well as a quick reference guide and a frequently asked questions and answers document. And now I'm going to turn it over to Jamie and she's going to walk you through a live demo. So I am on the project management website. I had gone to the certifications, certification types, and PMP page. And now from here, I can click on the apply now button and it will launch the new application. So as you can see, there are now three pages that I have to fill out as part of the application process. I fill out my academic education my field of study, the years I attended, and I can save my education. 
The other requirement for many of the certifications is professional education. If I am required to fill out professional education, I'll see the hours that I have to fill out and I can fill out one or multiple um, instances of my education. And I'm just gonna put in 40 hours. So now I've um, met both requirements of my education and I can continue to the experience page. From here, I would fill out any uh, PMP or project experience I have. For the PMP, I need to um, reach 36 months. And these are some of the new fields that we've introduced here um, in the drop-down form. So I can select the reporting area of my organization. The primary focus of my organization could be something different. Um, my approach or methodology, um, for the PMP, I would fill out traditional module or hybrid. If this was an ACP application, I would have multiple agile methodologies to fill out. Um, my team size, my budget, and the dates in which I worked for this company. So I'm gonna say October 2011, January 2020. And I can also mark if this if I currently work for this uh, organization. I would fill out um, the project description here. It has to be at least 200 words. Um, save my experience. And now that I've met my months for this experience, if I hadn't had met it with the one experience, I would have to add another one. Um, but I can continue to my exam details. Uh, my address, my name, my email, my phone number is already pre-populated from my profile. I can say where I'm going to sit for this exam. Do I need uh, exam accommodations? No. Um, I agree to the terms. I am saying that everything I have entered is accurate and I can sit, submit my application. And that is the application process for um, the PMP. I would be able to go to my dashboard and see the status of my application once it's been reviewed and can move on from there. So you can see my application is now submitted and it's going through the review process. Now I'm going to log out of this user and going to show you um, someone who is eligible to pay. Okay, I am now logged in as someone who is eligible to pay for my PBA. And you can see I have the submit payment for your exam link on my, my PMI dashboard. I'm clicking the submit to pay, I go straight to my cart. And you can see the PBA has been added to my cart. I can go ahead and um, if I wanted to view member options, um, and then I can continue to check out and pay for my certification exam. Once I pay for that exam, my information on my MyPMI dashboard will be updated. I'll receive a communication that I can go schedule my exam. I can move forward. Um, if I were to um, have a PGMP application or a PFMT application, um, there would be one extra step in the application process itself. Um, so I'm gonna just jump into this PGMP application real quick. And let me fill out an experience for my program. So the program is a little bit more than the project experience where I have to enter sub projects for my program and then go to the experience summary. So Additionally, for the program manager, I have two extra fields, the number of direct reports and the direct reports that are PMs. Program dates. So this is where I add my projects for my program. And if I wanted to, I could add additional projects or I could save my program. So I'm gonna save the program. 
And you can see I'm now reached my program experience. In addition to program experience for a program manager, I also have project experience. All right, now I have enough project months and program months, and I can continue to the experience summaries. So the expert page for the PGMP and the PFMP is the experience summaries page, where I would answer a series of questions um, and then tie them to my programs. So I would choose an option, reference the, the program that um, this is, this is where I had that experience, and I would give an, a summary of how I accomplished um, either one of these options and save my summary. Once I go through and enter details about each of these summaries, um, this will be part of my application. I can submit my application and pay, and then I go into the panel review process where PMPs review all these different um, entries and determine if I should be able to sit for my PGMP or PFMP exam. So that is the new application process for the PMP and uh, GMP, and the other applications are very similar. Okay. So I just wanted to go over a few of the things you can expect following this demo. We are going to be sharing the link to this recording, and this is suitable for external stakeholders, so you can share this as appropriate. We're also going to be sharing a quick reference guide, and that's something you can share externally as well. It will have just the highlights of the changes, such as the experience field changes that I'm showing on the screen right now. So you can have that as a guide um, to reflect on what's new um, somewhere quick to look and see what has been changed from the old version to the new format. As a reminder, we are planning to make these changes live in the second half of June 2020. We're looking forward to bringing you these new enhancements to make the application process a great start to your PMI certification journey. Thank you for watching the demo today.